Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. Now, in 2021, Dax De Silva, the founder of Canadian retail uh, company Lightspeed Commerce, pledged significant sums of his personal wealth to global conservation and restoration projects around the world. The Trinidad and Tobago Nature Seekers, led by Susan Batiste, is the eighth conservation project selected for funding by Dax's nonprofit organization, Age of Union. And joining me to talk more about this donation is founder of the Age of Union, Mr. Dax De Silva, and managing director of Nature Seekers, Ms. Susan Lacan batiste Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on now. Good morning. It's morning. a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Of course. Dax, well, I'm going to start off with you first. I mean, tell me a bit about yourself. I know that you, you know, would have started, you know, Lightspeed Commerce, but how exactly did you transition from tech to conservation projects? Mm -hmm. um, I, I grew up in, uh, in in the British in the province of British Columbia in Canada, where they were surrounded by a lot of natural beauty. As a teenager, I joined the protests when they were clear cutting a lot of the old growth forest, uh, and so became a, an activist uh, and very sensitive to to the um, to the potential for 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 us to save uh, some of the beautiful natural places around us, uh, and so. Yeah, building Lightspeed for for nearly 20 years. Uh, now I've, I have the opportunity, as I'm now the chairman uh, instead of CEO, to really focus on some of these conservation projects. Made a four, 40 million dollar pledge last year, uh, and are select I'm selecting projects all around the world that really are are special in terms of being led by real change makers, inspiring stories, and are, are making a significant contribution in terms of saving a threatened ecosystem or a species, uh, as is the case with leatherback turtles here in uh, in Matura, Trinidad. Of course. And is this the main focus of Age of Union, just to ensure conservation across the world? Yeah, it's 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 to protect places and, and species, but it's also to tell the stories. We're also doing, uh, we, we just premiered a film in Toronto um, about one of the other projects we're doing, uh, uh, the Sea Shepherd ship that we have uh, stationed off the coast of West Africa right now that's f that's fighting illegal fishing. Uh, so we, we have a short film that uh, that we that we produced and it's the third film uh, that we've done. So done, we've done it quite a bit in the last uh, in the last year. We're almost a year old, uh, but we're kind of moving at, at startup speed. You know, we're, we're sort of used to that pace of the tech startup and we have that DNA in how we approach uh, conservation because the world, the planet can't wait. We all we're all aware of the of the challenges and the, and the problems, and we really believe now is the time for for direct action and and uh, to support those who are working on the ground uh, and are so effective at what they do, like like nature seekers. Yeah, and of course, Suzanne, I'm going to bring you in here because I mean, just tell us a bit about the organization, nature seekers, and the primary focus of the organization as well. Yes, well, our organization, nature seekers, was founded in 1990. And this occurred as a direct result of the extensive slaughtering of egg-bearing females on the Matura Beach. When you look back in the 1970s and 80s, as much as 30% of our females were slaughtered either for meat, the fun of doing it, um, for fishing, use, and used as bait, and so on. And <clears throat> the, because it was an endangered species, the government called for help. And this partnership was formed with the Forestry Division way back in 1990 because the, the country had no monies. Um, there was no resources to go forward, but to engage the community who were perpetrators of themselves. We were part of the problem. We were poachers and so on. Today, after partnering with the government and being trained by them and understanding that this resource could be used as a, as a tool for conservation, we, Nature Seekers, was born. And a lot of community poachers, ex-poachers, children of poachers were drafted into this conservation and sustainable project. Today, slaughtering is a thing of the past. When you look at Matura way back then, it was like a graveyard. Today, it's like an active maternity ward. An where active country, maternity ward, where of course yes. those turtles will come and they will uh, nest. Um, also, Susan, quickly, can you tell us exactly how much was pledged and how do you intend to use the donation to ensure that that Matura coastline is protected? Yes, 1.5 million US was pledged for the turtle conservation for sustainability within the community. We in Matura, our beach is 8.8 .8 kilometers long. And to collect data, and the data is very important. Now that Trinidad is one of the places where our population seems to be less declining than all the other population. So Trinidad is now the hope for leatherback survival, the species that need to be protected in this area. 
And this was a big dilemma because of the pandemic. We, the lack of resources, the government front burner was held and so on. So the intervention, this divine intervention from Age of Union that bring this, we could now do what we do best. We'll patrol Matura Beach and it's important <coughs> because poaching keep would be poachers away. We monitor the beach, we collect data. We need to understand our population, what we need to do. <coughs> We're gonna be doing a lot of nest relocation because of the threats of erosion, the um, impact of, of um, the, because of the impact of climate change, we now have our beach being eroded. We have the influx of sagassum and so much more ills that is prevalent on Matura Beach. So mm -hmm. with this funding, we are now able to engage the community in a more meaningful way, using that to create sustainability within our community, engaging our citizen scientists in Matura and becoming more vigilant in conservation and sustainability. We will now be using drone technique this is new, this is innovative because we are now able to cover this length of beach. We can actually um, plot and know where we are losing beach, what we need to do, where we need to relocate eggs. And in this project as well, we have a nest box recovery for the hatchling. So we're going to be removing eggs from off the beach and placing them in these nest box areas that are threatened wow. by erosion. The, the influx of sagassum. So the important thing to note is that we need to have as many adults safe as well as having many hatchlings return to, re, to replace those adults. Of so course, with the, yeah. Yes, so with yeah. the hatching box, we'll be able to release as many babies as possible into the ocean. Yeah, that sounds like really, really good work, Susan. And I can see why Dax would have taken an interest. But Dax, I want to come back at you. And I know that you said that, you know, you always had that sort of activism when you were younger. And so you wanted to pledge your personal wealth. But why save turtles? Why not something like, say, like education or nutrition? Why this specific focus? Yeah, well, I think it's, uh, there are keystone species that, that tell us about the health of an ecosystem, the health of the survival and health of the leatherback turtle, which which is a hundred million year old species, the leatherback, this leatherback turtle, which the great hope for the turtle worldwide is now on, on in mature. It's in, it's in Trinidad the survival because of the work that's been done. This is a hundred million year old species that, uh, that, that was the contemporary of T-Rex. So it's, it's an incredible, uh, an incredible species. Uh, if we can protect this turtle, we are able to protect all of the other wildlife and the ecosystem that surrounds it. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I came to Trinidad, saw the, 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 the nesting season. This is a life-changing experience. And I think that, uh, that more people have to come to, to see this for themselves, uh, because it is a nature experience that makes people feel more connected to nature, more connected to animals. And there's a special part of this story, which is those leatherback turtles, they migrate, you know, through, through a lot of the study that's been done, as, as Susan has talked about, we've discovered that 60 to 70% of them migrate to Canadian waters um, uh, and they eat the jellyfish off of our Canadian waters. Uh, they get twice as large and then they come back with the energy and the food to be able to lay the eggs. So this is a project that's a collaboration between uh, Canada, uh, you know, where we're based and, and Trinidad for our common responsibility, these leatherback turtles. So it's a, it's a beautiful international story of collaboration that we're happy to embark on with Nature Seekers in Trinidad. Yes, and I know that the turtles will be very, very happy <laughs> that at least they have somewhere to nest when that time comes. Well, Mr. De Silva, uh, Mrs. Black, and Batista, me, thank you so much for joining us here on now, and all the best with your conservation projects, uh, Mr. De Silva, and of course, all the best to you, um, Mrs. Batiste from Nature Seekers. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, thank you for having us. Of course. We have so much more coming up on the Now Morning Show. Stay with us.